Dinner Party people, welcome back to another episode of Controversial Album Covers. This is episode number 31, and here it is. This is Mayhem's Dawn of the Black Hearts. It was released in 1995, however, it is actually a bootleg of a concert from February 28th, 1990. Most people in the general public do not know what this album is or have never heard of this album. And if they have, it's only because of the album cover. Most of them have never heard the album. And that is because this is often and almost always argued as the most disgusting and most controversial album cover of all time and here's what it is if you could see behind the post-it notes you would see a photograph that Euronymous who is the guitarist for Mayhem took when he found Dead who is the lead singer of Mayhem after he committed suicide okay let's pause there for a second if this isn't your thing and you're not interested in this I totally get it no harm no foul I'm not even going to know if you're watching so toodles I'll catch you on the next one I totally get it because this is going to get graphic if you are going to stick around, I highly recommend you grabbing your Striper Bible from the last episode because you're going to need it because it's going to get a little weird in here. I'm not going to go too deep into the story because it is deep and dark and funky. And it's, and it's fraught with legends and he said, she said, and nobody knows really if it was true. And most of the main players are already dead, which you'll find out. And I don't mean dead the singer. I mean all of them are dead. Uh, and you'll find out why here in a minute. Now, Dead, as I said, he was the lead singer of Mayhem. He's actually the third lead singer and arguably the best lead singer. And he and Euronymous get a lot of credit for bringing the Norwegian death metal scene to the forefront of the world or credit for even making it happen. Mostly Euronymous, but some of it goes to Dead posthumously. Uh, but Euronymous had a label and he had a record store and he really promoted the Norwegian black metal. But he was a super douchebag. And if you don't believe me, let's get into the story. So on April 8th, 1991, all the boys of Mayhem were living in a house together and they were doing what they do, making music and whatever it is band members do. And they were all gone except for Dead. And Dead had a predilection towards, surprise, surprise, death and dying. He was known to uh, cut himself on stage and bleed on the fans and they loved it. Who doesn't love a good souvenir? Uh, and... He just believed that he was dead. He, he had a near-death experience as a child, and he believed that he had died and came back, so that he believed that he was already dead. So he decided to test that, and what he did is he slashed both wrists and slashed his neck and then took a shotgun and blew his brains up. As it turns out, he was not dead, but he is now. Euronymous is the first one to come home, and what does he do? Same thing anybody else would do. Why do I keep feeling like I'm reading a Greek tragedy? Anyway, Euronymous runs down the street and buys a camera and comes back and starts taking pictures of Dead's corpse. He's really happy with himself, but he's not really happy with the composition of the photograph, so he starts moving Dead's body around until he gets it to where he wants it and then takes some more pictures. If that's not enough, then he picks up some of the brain matter and he picks up some of the uh, skull fragments and fashions those into necklaces and gives those to the people he deems worthy in the black metal community. Uh, including one of them went to Bull Metal, who actually lives in Colombia at the time, and he is the owner of Warmaster Records. And he loves it. He's like, this is amazing. I can't believe I have his skull fragment. Woo! How black metal is that? And he decides that, well, we're going to make this an album cover. So they bootlegged the concert from February 28th and put this on the cover. Going back to the band in the 1990, uh, now the bass player for... Mayhem is super not happy and his name is Necro Butcher and he's so pissed off that he leaves the band and threatens to kill Euronymous. He doesn't, but he threatens to kill him. Now, Necro Butcher is event eventually replaced by Varg Vickerness. Um, however, there was a bass player in between those two, but he left the band because Euronymous kept sending him death threats. As I said, he's kind of a super douche. Uh, two years later, Varg Vickerness would eventually kill Euronymous by stabbing him to death for a myriad of reasons. Mostly, it is believed because uh, Euronymous owed him a ton of money for residuals for the label and for some other things that they had done, and he never paid them. Also, it's because Euronymous was a huge douchebag. Uh, but so, any hoozle, he died, and uh, Varg served 15 years. He's out and doing whatever it is he does now. Needless to say, Mayhem has had some issues over the years. They are still a band, and they are still touring around. Um, a little trivia back to Dead. Uh, he is, and, and I'm sure you guys will correct me if I'm wrong on this, and it's, it's hard to track down some of this information from the 90s when there's no internet. He is 
uh, often credited as one of the first musicians to wear corpse or dead paint, which is where you paint your face black and white so you look like a corpse. Uh, the most mainstream version of that, if you don't know what I'm talking about, is Ghost. Um, he obviously made that his own. I think he might even have to have that trademark. Uh, but it's but it's often believed that Dead is one of the first artists to do that. I don't know if that's 100% true or not. Again, it's hard to track that stuff down. He also was known to bury his clothes for days, weeks, months at a time, and then he would dig them up and wear them in concert. And then, of course, he would cut himself and bleed all over because, yay, it's awesome. Uh, again, Mayhem has had some issues. They are still together, or at least they were as of 2019. Um, and in 2003, they still have their issues because in 2003, they almost killed a fan when they threw a severed sheep's head into the audience and it fractured somebody's skull. Hey, man, what's a fractured skull when you get a souvenir like that? I mean, you could get a drumstick, but talk about walking around with a dead sheep's head. Who else gets that? You know what I'm saying? It's messed up. I can't believe that Netflix or somebody hasn't done a documentary. Because, again, I, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there was a movie in 2018 called Lords of the Chaos that kind of is loosely based on what happened with the band and the Norwegian black metal scene. But I don't know, man. I, I, if you like that kind of stuff, uh, I highly recommend going in, searching, and researching this story. It is insane. But anyway, from here on out, good luck sleeping.